I'd like to call the November 13th regular meeting of the Post Falls Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody to this evening's planning and zoning meeting. Just a quick note, if you do wish to speak regarding uh, on items on tonight's agenda, make sure that you sign up and turn that in up front. But we'll go ahead and get things going. Start with the roll call, please. Ampy. Here. Bishop. Here. Davis. Here. Kimball. Present. Perry. Here. Stephenson. Here. All right, Mr. Manley, any amendments to this evening's agenda? There's none. Do we have anything in regards to ceremonies, appointments, announcements, and or presentations? None there either. Okay. Commissioners, any declaration of conflict this evening? No. None tonight. Okay. No. Seeing none, we will move to the consent calendar. Mr. Manley. Yeah, item A is the minutes from the October 9th meeting. And item B is the reason decisions for the Worth annexation, file number ANNX 8-2018. Make sure had a chance to look at that. I would look for a recommendation. I will move to approve uh, the October 9th, 2018 consent calendar as presented. My second. Got a motion and a second. Call for, call for vote. Stephenson? Yes. Carey? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Davis? Yes. Bishop? Yes. Gampy? Yes. Okay. I Action item number eight this evening is citizen issues. This section of the agenda is reserved for citizens <coughs> wishing to address the commission on an issue that is not on the agenda. Comments on this issue um, or comments that may be planned for future issues uh, should be held for that meeting. Do we have anyone here for general citizen issues? Okay, none being said, then we'll move on to uh, any un or old business. Unfinished or old? There's none. Okay. Then that'll bring us to the public hearing section this night. We'll go ahead and open up the Fox Trailer Zone Text Amendment. Mr. Manley, I'll let you read all the numbers. Good evening, Commissioners. John Manley, Planning Manager here with the City of Post Falls. Introducing the Fox Trailer Zone Text Amendment, RZNE. 6 2018 the property owner is chad fox with the applicant being scott MacArthur. so we're here this evening because there's a desire to construct a flag that exceeds the the, the maximum requirements found within code and so we're looking at does our code need to be modified this isn't a unusual circumstance with zoning codes oftentimes development is what um, causes a look at codes and can be a healthy perspective on on reviewing any sort of zoning code subdivision code or whatnot so this particular request is within title 18 it's in a specifically our signage element that deals with flag regulations so here's an excerpt from that uh, the title 18 and so you see that right here there's three elements to deal with uh, what do not require a flag permit for flags. The two that are being requested by the applicant for modification would be the second and third item on here. The second being a flag pole element where in uh, residential they shall not exceed 30 feet above ground level and then 45 feet in any commercial or industrial zone. And then on three it deals with the flag size, so what size of flag. So it's really a size of pole, size of flag matter. <clears throat> I've highlighted these proposed changes here on this slide and what the request was. So you see the regulatory language in item two with the proposed unless engineering calculations supporting a larger flag pole are submitted to and approved by the city of Post Falls building department for the flag pole or that each proposed flagpole will be analyzed to verify that flagpole does not pose a threat to public health, safety, or general welfare. 
<clears throat> the third item here being once again the size of flag and I have the highlighted sections for residential and the highlighted section pertaining to commercial and industrial. Very similar language to the uh, size, the height, the flight pole, but it does go into elements that I highlight here in red that the going into symbols, shapes, verbiage, physical characteristics, this, all this stuff in red that you see here that was in your staff report starts going into content related language. And so uh, staff would recommend if you so chose to go down a path as being proposed that we would modify the language to be more content neutral. Staff did propose some options and I want to remind you guys that not only are you, you guys have the liberty to go with what the proposed language or what staff proposes to you, but you can also come up with your own language and forward that recommendation on to City Council. So option one would be to allow flagpoles to be 25 feet above the overall height limit of any underlying zoning district. <clears throat> the flagpole itself would be within a 600 foot buffer area or area on center line of I-90 and Highway 41. And the rights of way as well as a 300 foot buffer for the Pleasant View Road right away, regardless of the lot size. So the meaning of that is, is the intent would be you would keep the size within that buff, the flag within that buffer area. So even if you have a huge 40 acre lot, that just because that buffer overlaid your lot, it wouldn't mean anywhere on that 40 acres. It'd be within that corridor. Size for residential areas would be 120 square feet and that to be no larger than 400 square feet for non-residential zones. So this is what that corridor would look like overlaid post falls. You have I-90 running east-west. Here's that buffer so it captures most of that commercial industrial type activity running along I-90. As well as Highway 41, it captures similar commercial industrial, some multifamily and other uses along Highway 41. Then there's that narrower strip on Pleasant View. The other option would be, in, so instead of having the, a buffer area or a, an area eligible for flags being along corridors would be, hey, within, would be within City of Post Falls city limits, say anywhere on any zoning district allow a flag to be erect, pole to be erected 25 feet above the overall height limit for that zone. But that same similar size requirements for flags being 120 for residential and 400 for non-residential. Now there's no real true science in these numbers. They were just, it's all for debate and discussion. What you guys may seem to deem fit, maybe increase the size, decrease the size. It's all open for discussion as we, forward a recommendation to council. So that kind of summarizes, you know, the overall staff report and kind of, kind of the gist. We're kind of all just punting this on the council for discussion. We're here to discuss the matter. We did notice um, these agencies as part of our notice of jurisdictions. We didn't receive any comments. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for me at this point? Questions for staff this time? Um, on option two, um, number one, does this, um, okay, allowing flag poles to be 25 feet above the overall height limit of the underlying zone district citywide. So if it's in a residential and you have a 35 foot residential limit, it can be 25 above that. So you could have a flag pole 50, 60, 60, 60 feet 60. in yep. a residential area? Is that what that's That's saying? what that's saying as an alternative, yep. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Other questions? None? Okay. Thank you, sir. Once again, I do want to say tonight we're just forwarding a recommendation mm -hmm. on the city council. So all right, thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Applicant. Uh, 
Good evening, Scott MacArthur, H2 Surveying and Engineering, uh, here tonight to represent the uh, Fox family as we talk about uh, their flag. And um, it's kind of a, an, an emotional uh, dealing for the Fox family in that uh, I guess the conversation started with the city back in uh, December of 2016 about having a flag. Uh, the only requirement being, let's get the flagpole engineered. Um, and, and I think everybody was on board, and I don't, I don't think we blame anybody at the city for anything. It was just the steps that the Fox family went through brought it to where we're at today. Um, I think the city's been great, uh, proposing options that are similar to what we've requested. Um, <clears throat> I guess my big question is, why is the American flag part of a sign code? And I don't think you can look at any municipality around here and see where the American flag is governed under a sign code because you have Robito Motors in Coeur d'Alene with a flag that's larger than their sign code allows. You've got Camping World in Liberty Lake and Harley Davidson in Liberty Lake with a, with a flag that's bigger than the sign code allows and it's not even discussed in their sign code that I can find. Uh, I reached out to both the municipalities and just asked them because those are the two uh, closest. Uh, so I guess I feel bad that the Fox family had to come here to do this uh, it turned into more of a debacle, I think, than we all expected, but we're here, uh, and I think that was an opportunity to uh, get this addressed. So, uh, to keep it simple, uh, we're in support of the corridor option. Uh, I like the corridor. It makes sense. It's a good area. Uh, it's similar to that. Um, I mean, where you see the other flags, you see 95, you see I-90, uh, and it, I guess it, it promotes patriotism and I think that's all the flag is I mean the Fox family's flown their flag since they put their building up in state line I understand different area um, but they can't even fly their flag at half mast because their existing pole isn't big enough so they want to pick that flag up take it to, uh, to Post Falls they went through the trouble of getting their flag pole engineered uh, it had to be 70 feet in height to make that work to be able to fly it at half mast during those uh, ceremonies um, but I think the most important thing is I don't think there should be a height limit because there are larger flags than that that are being proposed out there. And if you can go through the trouble of getting an engineer, showing that it's not going to interfere with neighboring parcels, show that it's going to uh, promote patriotism and, and not you know, be a detriment to public health, safety, or welfare, I think you should be okay to fly your flag. So the corridor option, the 300 feet, uh, are, are, I believe it's saying that all parcels within 300 feet, right? So if your parcel, you were saying if you had a 40 acre parcel that was within 300 feet, the entire parcel would be able to fly the flag? <clears throat> so to clarify on that inquiry, is what we're stating is that within that 300 foot from center line, mm -hmm. that that's where the flag, that it would, if, have to be. it would have to be within that. So even if the parcel was larger than or outside of that, but the, that part is within that 300 foot, then you would qualify for the flag to be within that 300 foot or 600 foot band. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Um, so I guess we're here tonight to, to solve that and I, I don't know if we're here to solve, we're making a recommendation to the council. Um, but I guess we're, we're in support of the corridor option and I think it's a good option and I think it uh, kind of puts this to rest because I don't think there's any opposition from anybody uh, in this city or even this county or uh, in America. <laughs> you know, I just want to uh, just point that out that I think it turned into more of a, an issue than we all expected. But uh, I think that's a great option. And um, my only recommendation would be no height restriction. Just prove that it can be supported, uh, you know, promote the health, safety and welfare of the public and not intervene with any neighboring parcels in that. Uh, I'm not saying you can't put it on your property line, but uh, you know, don't put it on your property line in the way of your neighbor's sign or, or don't be a detriment to your neighbor. So just some consideration for that would be great. So any questions? Questions for applicant? I have a couple. Um, what's the square footage of the flag that, you, that your clients want to put up? 375 square feet, okay. 20 by 25. Um, <clears throat> what's the height of the pole they want Se to put up? 70 feet. Okay. That's it. 
One, one quick question just for clarification, <coughs> though. Uh, when that went through engineering, it had to be at 70 in order for that size of flag to be able to fly at half-mass, correct? Uh, I believe that's correct. I believe we okay. picked the, yeah, okay. the, the smallest pole that was capable of supporting that type okay. of flag okay. just to keep it off the ground during half-mass. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, did you, this is just for my own clarification, did you say that the, the city of Coeur d'Alene does not consider the American flag under the flag code? I don't see it in their code. I, I, I've researched their code. I've looked through Liberty Lakes code. I've looked through Spokane Valley's code. And they all have flag codes, just not. I didn't, yeah, I didn't really see anything specific to an American flag, to heights, anything like that. Like well, that. I, don't, I don't think ours does either. I think ours is just flags. It's it's strictly flag. It's not yeah. yeah. It's, and a flag's a flag. And we yeah we can't. Yeah. I mean that's what they have to do in their right. Pros. You can't make be, it generic. We can't say you can fly this flag this size, but you can't fly American. It's the flag content this issue. That, it's content, generic. Yeah. So yeah. and so, it's yeah. it's all specific to flags, but uh, pertaining into a, a signage issue, I just don't understand. It's a different code that's not written in any other municipal code that I can find. So okay, um, just bringing that to everybody's attention. So. Perfect. No, we appreciate it. Any other questions? No? Okay. Right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Public comment. Do we have anyone wishing to speak in favor, neutral, or against? No. None. So there would be no need for applicant <coughs> rebuttal. Let's have one quick question for staff. Um, and so a, a flagpole of a height that would require a sign permit under the any of the proposed codes would that need so that need to fall under building code does that fall under building code under flagpoles yeah, just because you don't need to get a sign permit does not exclude you from having to meet the building code requirements so if what are i don't have the building code memorized per for what's but, required for flags and what that point trigger point is okay but <laughs> Yeah. But there, there is a point in which building code kicks in, just like for, for like a cell tower or something like that. Yeah, or like a freestanding sign. <coughs> eight, I know eight feet's the number there to where okay. if you're above eight feet. Now you got to get engineered drawings to show that your sign isn't going to blow over and you know injure someone under certain okay. lines. So the sign permit that pretty much just pushes you towards the building permit part. Is that how that works in the city? Yeah, you would either if it was didn't require a sign permit. If it was under a certain size, then you would just get your building permit for that. It would be a separate. Versus the sign permit, if you were to get it, would then go through the planning department's review and meet zoning code requirements for the sign. So that's where the zoning code would be different than maybe what would be called out in the International Building Code. Okay. And to clarify on some of the matters pertaining to how it got in our municipal code, is we you said maybe. At one time, our code wasn't content neutral, and so it was like 2011, I believe, that we revised our code to become content neutral. So flags being content neutral uh, then triggers in other types of signage that could manifest into a type of a flag, and so that's how it gets kind of dovetailed into the signage regulation. <clears throat> sure. Sir, I know you came in late, but you did raise your hand. If you did wish to speak, you would need to fill out one of those forms and, and bring it up. Okay. So any other questions for staff at this point? Nope. I just have a question. Um, can we separate out the residential part from the co commercial? I mean... Here, John. So yeah, you can, you can exclude uh, changing the residential certain maybe. residential districts out of the the sign code. It gets a little tricky because are you going to do R one, R one S? We have R two, which is your medium density, and you have R three. Uh, so. Or, or if you leave it like it is now, I mean, you don't change the the height of the flagpole, you know, so they could make it so much taller in a residential area. Yeah, you can change the number, maybe 10 feet above 
in a residential zone. So you could go from, if it was an R1 at 35, you can go to 45. You know, if you didn't like 25 in the residential, you could change it to 10. Um, you could also leave it as the, in a residential area that you're maxed at your whatever's permitted for that underlying zoning district too. You can change okay. that. So we, okay, thank you. Perfect. I think we did have one individual that did wish to speak. So I'll have you fill that form out after. Is it David? Is that correct? All right. Can we have you uh, come up front, state your name and your address, and then you have four minutes. My name is uh, Dave Worrell. I, am, uh, I live at uh, 204 East 1st Avenue, uh, unit E15, right on the river there. And I just came in to support um, the, uh, the, the large flag. I don't see any problem with it. Um, it's, it's in a commercial zone. These people have had this flag in state line. And, you know, if, and, they, and I heard that they did engineer it and that they did kind of get a pre qualification before they spent all their money to move over here to Post Falls and, and pay taxes and employ people. <laughs> and uh, I just, I'm, like I said, I'm just here to support it. And I, I think we could have something in our, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a retired developer, commercial general contractor, and there's, there always needs to be some gray area or some exception to hard and fast rules. You know, you just can't write rules that apply to every situation and I guess that's what this hearing is all about is just you know so um, you know somebody can talk about on a case-by-case -case basis and, that, and that's all I'm just like I said I just heard about it don't even know these people but I just want to support it all right we appreciate you coming out thank you David obviously in support I don't believe the applicant has any rebuttal with that any other questions for staff while John still up? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and I'll uh, open it up for uh, conversation. Mr. Kimball, start with you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, really, just a couple things. Um, kind of with regard to the corridor part I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the <clears throat> corridor and simply because along I-90 there's there is some residential right adjacent to I-90 especially not right next to Ple Pleasant View and I'm not sure a 70-foot flagpole sporting a 200 foot or a 400 foot squ square foot flag in someone's backyard is an appropriate thing for a residential neighborhood um, blocking out the sun um, for the neighbors that said, uh, so I don't think that's necessarily appropriate for a residential neighborhood, but I do think it's, it's appropriate for commercial and industrial zone properties, um, which is the majority of the area that is in those underlying areas or in that corridor. And which is also something, I'm not a big fan of the, the 25 feet above um, the residential height limit. Uh, that's generally because that would be a 60 foot tall flagpole in a front yard and I think the city of Post Falls has a 60 foot minimum lot width and if you kind of do the math and think about the scale of a residential neighborhood versus a flagpole of that size I think that's probably a little beyond the scale of um, what's probably appropriate. So um, I do think that a 30-foot flagpole is fine. Something that's above the vast majority of most houses. That's how for a three-story house. Um, <clears throat> so I went through the code and, and John, if you could go back to the original part of the where it says the part of the on the staff report where it, it goes to the the flags um, today's code uh, 
There we go. Thinking oh. of this one? That one. Yep. <coughs> so I just kind of threw something out there. I think that the first line where it says flags, um, I think it should say flags may require a sign permit and are subject to the following limitations. And then number one, just be the same. And uh, number two would say something to the effect of flagpoles less than 30 feet above ground level in any residential zone or less than 45 feet above ground level in any non-residential zone do not require a permit. That way it just, it separates it out and that also helps because we have, um, I guess the tech zone, which is also neither really commercial nor industrial, it's kind of all, everything. Um, <clears throat> and then I think number three would say something to the effects of flags less than 60 square feet in residential zones and less than 135 square feet in non-residential zones do not require a sign permit, which just kind of cleans things up, goes residential, non-residential, pretty much the same as what's there, except it kicks agricultural zone into the 135 square foot um, area. And then add number four, which is similar to our the option two that would be, have been in the staff report. It says something to the effect of a flagpole exceeding 45 feet above ground level in a non-residential zone will require a sign permit and be limited to a height 25 feet above overall building height limit in the underlying zone uh, citywide. So that'd be for the non-residential zones. And then number five, basically flags exceeding 60 square feet in an agricultural zone or residential zone um, or flags exceeding 135 square feet in commercial or industrial zones shall require a signed permit and that flags shall be no larger than 120 square feet in a residential zone and no larger than 400 square feet in a non-residential zone. I think that keeps the scale a little more appropriate and residential and non-residential and I know it's a lot to to take in all at once but I think what it does is that it it allows for tall big flags in residential and commercial areas and ag, ag even even though there's not a whole lot of that um, but there's still some and allows but keeps it more residential scale oriented in residential zones where that's probably a little more appropriate. Um. Hey Ray, do you want me to put that on the monitor real quick? What's that? Your suggestions. Sure. Okay, while we're doing that, Vicki, any additional comment? Um, my big worry was the, the residential. I don't want to see um, the residential pole limit exceed um, up to you know, a 60 foot pole in a residential. Mm. Um, I agree with keeping it where it, I'd like to see it stay where it is now for residential. And we can do some adjustment on the other. Okay, James? Yeah, same thing. I don't, the residential, if you add the 25, you're up near 60 and then you're at 120 square feet. Uh, giant flag in a residential area. So I think we need to separate however we write this separate the residential and the commercial um, but I like the corridor area um, because the majority of the it is commercial and industrial there so that all I think that fits well with there's not much residential um, in that area so I'd like the corridor area but we think we need to separate it out commercial versus residential okay mr. Bishop I think um like Scott had mentioned, option one <clears throat> does meet their criteria, so I would be in favor for the uh, amended option one. Okay. Nancy. I would as well. Okay, so it sounds like everybody's on the same page in the sense of we have an engineer pull and the size of the flag in that particular zone. No one has an issue at all with that. I think it comes down to the proper verbiage that we forward on to council. 
So with everybody on the same page, I think at some point we will entertain a motion. I don't know if uh, anybody wants to take a stab at it. <coughs> Are we, I mean, do we need to clarify the verbiage exactly? Um, I don't or think we do. I mean, that's something between legal and city council when they get there. Okay, so, but similar to what we have, I want to look at this. I want a minute to read over this again. And we'll be bringing the findings back also before it goes to council. Before it goes to city council, so, okay. So, yeah, you go ahead, and I think it'd be good to go over this language, but yeah. Okay, thank you. So basically, we've got, seems like two different, I know we have some individuals that are in favor of the first option, um, but Mr. Kimball has presented a third, if you will, option here. So if we need a minute to be able to go over that and uh, discuss it more, we can do that before we make a motion. From a location-wise, this standpoint, this point, this would make that right there up on the screen would make just as much sense in that corridor. It's just, <clears throat> I just have a concern about the residential zones that are in that corridor um, already and making sure that it doesn't get a pro it's not a, or that scale is appropriate to zone the existing zones can we have the, i'm sorry ray yeah i would just to touch on what you're mentioning can we have it a corridor but then for non-residential yeah so that way the the corridor would still if it was residential it wouldn't does that make sense i would think so okay so the corridor just eliminating residential, anything residential in that corridor, is that? Zoned, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you gonna try it? That's you, you oh, No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I wasn't ready to try. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually like, the, on option one, I think I think number one is perfectly fine the way it is. I mean, that's just my opinion, but I think number one is perfectly fine. I think that number two is that's where we're talking the residential zones, um, and you know, may, and and we could maybe have some. I'm fine with maybe tweaking that one a bit. Um, I have a hard time visualizing exactly how tall that would be, but sixty feet. Yeah, well, well, yeah, when I, that's you know. tall. <laughs> Number one's covering both residential and non-residential, isn't it? <clears throat> Not broke out as it just says underlying zoning district, so it doesn't specify. Right, so the way that option one is crafted is it would, if there was residential zones within that 600, you would get that you would get increase that of 25. Yeah, so that's so where we, we your concern and phrase would be to eliminate yeah, residential. Yeah, we, or, we could add, or we could add in there non, any, the underlining non-residential right. zoning district. Correct. And that would just be for that then. Okay. And then also with the number two on option one, I still th I think a 120 square foot flag is pretty big for a residential that's a pretty big flag. What do we what do we have right now? 60, 60. isn't it? 60? So we're going double on a residential. Yeah, but if you exclude them. No, I mean, we just you don't this wouldn't have to well, be I, yeah, 120. I see, but, but if we just pull residential out of option 1, right. You're not even talking about that 120 foot or 100 square foot in the residential area because you're not even the residential zoning district verbiage would be would come out of that because you're going to exclude all the residential from option one. So that verbiage wouldn't even be in there, Vicky. Yeah. Oh, okay. So two would be out completely. Is that what you're saying? No. Well, no. The commercial part, the non-residential zoning, would be still be in there. Oh. Okay. The 120 square foot for residential <coughs> would be in there. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So. So it seems like that's where we have the issue, is how big that flag is in the residential area and high the, how high the flagpole is. So in essence, what I'm hearing over on this side is that looking at option one, but removing uh, the residential piece from that. So therefore, on option one, number uh, line two, size of flag shall be no larger 
than 400 square feet in non-residential zoning district. It would basically take the residential piece out. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that would leave residential the same, it is, same as it is now, right? Yes, 60, so 60. if I understand you correctly at this point, you guys are proposing <clears throat> you would want to do the corridor option one, exclude any element of a change for residential, but only change the non-residential zoning districts within the corridor to have up to a 400 square foot size of fl a flag and 20 feet above that underlying zoning district within yeah. that corridor. 25. Yeah. yeah. 25 feet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to shoot for a motion here. Um, I would move to recommend a text change to the zoning code title 18 36.040 um, <clears throat> to allow for within the corridor shown in option one of the staff report to allow flagpoles 25 feet above the overall building height limit of underlying non-residential zones and for flags to be of larger size within that corridor in non-residential zones up to 400 square feet. Okay. A second. Got a motion and a second. Call for roll. Hampy. Yes. Bishop. Yes. Davis. Yes. Kimball? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Stephenson? Yes. Okay. Motion moves to City Council. Mr. Manley, item number 11, new business. Any new business this evening? There's none. Staff comments? Nope. Commissioner comments? Anything for the good of the order? Happy turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, appreciate the time working everything out. I would look for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. <clears throat>